the Glass Cannon Network. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to episode eight of season four of Get in the Trunk. I said welcome back to episode eight, as if this is episode eight, part two. It's not. Don't be confused. Just welcome back to the season of Get in the Trunk that has just been my favorite thing that I've ever been a part of. I got I got to be honest. I am <laughs> loving <laughs> this. Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Finger gun. Uh, it's been so much fun watching you guys go through this just incredible uh, setting and adventure on which you can explore these characters in, in amazing ways. And we're going to dive back into it tonight and go even deeper uh, than we have ever gone into the unnatural, uh, as, as it turns out, uh, based on where everyone is in the story and where you're going. It's, it's been just remarkable to be a part of i i i want to talk about last week for 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 a little bit but um but first i want to say that tonight we have an exciting giveaway a giveaway courtesy of arc dream publishing i don't want to forget it i want to mention it off the top and i'll mention it again in a little bit but hang in there for a few minutes and i'll give you the details of that giveaway uh in a second so all in all it's going to be a huge night tonight and i just want to thank francis for Dressing appropriately for the occasion. <laughs> He's the one that wore a collared shirt to this to this event. Well, the rest of us look like I schlubs, Francis. This. He's cosplaying very seriously. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, yes, I, I thought to get into Bobby's mind, I need to be dressed as Bobby. I need to be very, it's polo shirts. It's clean cut. Uh, I, I made sure I cut my hair very tight, high and tight. <laughs> Yeah, so, I'm bringing it. I'm bringing it. <laughs> Cut that hair very tight. Let's throw up that picture of uh, of Bobby if we have it. Uh, just to show another picture of Bobby. Oh, and I love yeah, I Bobby. can see that guy wearing polos on the weekends. On the weekends. On the weekends. He's casual on the weekends. Yeah. <laughs> when but, he dresses no. down a little. But no. <laughs> Sid, uh, how are you? How are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. Um, I had a weird day because today was the day that my car got towed away because <gasps> it was totaled. Uh, what? Oh, no. What? In uh, what? freak accident. Not my fault. I wasn't even in the car. It never is. Ne never my fault. my fault. It's not my fault. <laughs> uh, not my fault. <laughs> it was parked on my block, like scored a good parking spot on my block that the, my apartment's on. Woke up the next morning, walked out, 8 a.m. I see, like, some cops at the end of the block. And I'm like, ay, 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 you know, what happened? So I'm walking down. As I get closer and closer, I'm like, my car's down by the end of the block. And there seems <laughs> oh, to be a big old accident. Sure hope my car's okay. Mm. And it turns out somebody in a stolen car blew a red light. T-bone someone in an intersection and then crashed that car into like six parked cars on the block. Oh my and god. And just wow. domino smushed all the cars. Oh. And my car was just what? one of the ones in the middle. So it got hit from the back, it got hit from the front. And I walked out, I saw it, and I was like, all right. I just turned around and walked the other way. I was like, I'll get the police report later, I guess. My car is <laughs> stuck between two cars. Uh and yeah. That's a Went through insurance and they were like, yeah, it's a 2011 Honda CRV. It's totally, we're not fixing that. <laughs> so then what do they do? Do they cut you a check? Yeah, they cut you a check, which sucks though, because the for money what? they- For like the, for yeah, the blue the book value? The market value. Whatever the market value. Yeah, of what the car is today. But like, it sucks because they give you a, a cheap payout because the car's not worth much. It's a 2011. It's got a lot of miles on it. And it's not enough to get a new car. So I'm like, what is the point of insurance? You gave me some money, but now I don't have a car and I can't get a new one. So like. The but, point of insurance, Sydney, is yeah. to make insurance companies a lot of money. Yeah. 
like a ridiculous <laughs> exactly. amount of money. And then occasionally it saves you. And it does. Yeah. But in, <laughs> and, in yeah. these cases, yeah, you're like, I have not enough money to buy a car and my car's gone. Mm. How did this Thanks. work out? <laughs> Thanks, Geico. <laughs> but uh, I shouldn't yeah. complain because you know what I did get? I am going to get uh, an amount and I'll like save it. And maybe in the future I'll get a car. I'm trying to look at it as I'm a real New Yorker now. No car. You're like skid level now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Enjoy the next 25 yeah. years. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to hear no that. That's that sucks. It that is lame. Eh, it's okay. It totally happens, and it truly it's so funny when something happens that is so out of your control that you have this like freeing feeling of being like, I don't have any control over what just happened, and all I can do yeah. is be along for the roller coaster ride of like whatever this is going to end up being. Right. So yeah, at least um, it's not like you made. Some bonehead mistake, yeah. right? Like that yep. would feel right. a lot worse. Uh, calling the that's insurance company and then York. being like, "We're not covered it." Yeah, yeah. And also, <laughs> that's gas such is a so New expensive, York and I'm like, it's a blessing in disguise. I'm like, no more car, better for the environment for a minute until maybe I get a new car. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Giving the earth <laughs> that little break that it needs. <laughs> Just to, to, to it'll come patch back. up. It'll patch up that hole in no time. I tell you. <laughs> Well, uh, it's time for uh, a game I like to play on occasion. Uh, is Troy emailing or is Troy asleep? Skid. Mm. <laughs> you guess. Uh, uh, I'm going to guess that he's emailing. Francis? Yeah, I see I see a hint of pursed lips underneath this, uh, the cap. Uh, I he think may he's sleep thinking. with pursed lips. You don't know. <laughs> As, that's, that's possible. Or do that's you? very possible. But I, he, he did I sleep on your couch emailing. for some time. I oh got. I've, I've seen him sleeping too long, too many times. <laughs> too many times. I've watched. I've watched him sleep. <laughs> I've watched this man sleep all too many times. <laughs> too many times. Uh, Troy, are you? Uh, you know what, buddy? Look, it's it's the night time. I think I think you earned one. Why don't you crack yourself a little IPA? And have some fun playing games with your friends for a second. Oh, I'm Stop sorry. Working. Were you talking to me? <laughs> Eyes are lighting up. Oh, look I at was uh, reading a little book uh, I found oh. on my pillow this morning. You know, the strangest oh, thing, I went to bed and the book wasn't there. And then it was just there <laughs> right when I woke up. Oh, I'm just giving this a little oh, gander. <laughs> Oh, God. And then I went oh. to my fridge and there was this weird beer there as well. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just thought I'd drink. So, um, carry on with your little show. Troy, Troy, what does, uh, what does the Kool-Aid taste like? Tell us. Uh, this is King Smooth by, uh... Treehouse Brewery, and I literally, when I picked it out to drink it, I had no idea that there was literally a yellow king on the front <laughs> of it. It's a yellow can with a yellow king on it. It's, mm, uh, it tastes it's like basically, psychosis. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, uh, the famous Treehouse beer of Julius, the King Julius version, but like soaked in bananas. Now it sounds like, oh, that'd be gross. It what? is absolutely outstanding. And it goes really well with this very confusing book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so yes troy is holding up a copy of the king in yellow uh, uh actually in his apartment or his house you're, you're in a house now yeah, the, yeah it, so last week was it it was so wonderful for me i loved the scene where you guys sat at the coffee shop and began for the first time talking to each other about the king in yellow the, the play it is such a fascinating I, I've just been digging into it for too long now because of this campaign. And I've barely scratched the surface of like the depth of this psychosis. Uh, it is hard to explain or even understand. And even understanding it makes you mad, right? Which is kind of the point, which is it's neat. It, it can be a cop out, but it can be uh, interesting to explore and to see your character sitting there trying to pull apart. Like what's happening here? We've done an adventure, uh, an operation with a number uh, a, 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 an equation, the last equation, a number that if you read the number, it could drive you mad and you could uh, you could murder people. We've done um, an operation with cultish, you know, a cult uh, that to appease their God, they just need to make human sacrifices. Terrible. We've done an operation where a hideous beast 
almost killed everybody and you had to kill a beast that would just, you know, to me, as I dig into this, there is nothing more terrifying than the King in yellow. Yeah. And in terms of its scope and capability of disaster, I think it's safe to say that you four are facing not only the greatest threat that the get in the trunk operational teams have faced, but I believe you're facing the greatest threat that Delta Green has ever faced. It is so world spanningly, insidiously dangerous. It's a great old one. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's like as simple as picking up that book and reading it and the infection that you can pass on to everyone around you in doing so. And you guys are tip of the iceberg here as, as you dig into it. Uh, so it, by means of a brief reca recap, um, Sydney and, uh, or sorry, I should say Vicky and Roger really had it out once again. Like the, their relationship is such a roller coaster, highs and lows. <laughs> uh, but after the meeting with Lewis Post, they were, they were uh, Vicky was very upset at Roger's brash and wild handling of it. Roger was defending it as this, but guy is insane. I'm trying to draw this stuff out of him. And in fact, Roger did draw out this king in yellow explanation and that abigail is upstairs neil finds out that uh his friend fran is gone on assignment in providence and he's desperately trying to track her down because she may have a copy of the play with her based on the article michelle van fitz gave her a copy and then uh bobby and and uh, roger get a little toasty at the bar and uh bobby Overall, Francis, I want to say, I just want to give you a shout out for playing <laughs> truly the most realistic version of a person <laughs> encountering the the unnatural. I'm trying to remember your exact, your speech was so succinct last week, and I don't remember it exactly, but it was something like, <laughs> we're talking about... Airline tickets from the future, paintings <laughs> from the past of the future, and an apartment that only exists at night. What is going on? Like, uh, it was it was just so well done. I, I applaud you. Thank you, Bobby's. Bobby's on his edge. He's just trying to get a handle on things right now. Yeah, With some pills. That is like that's such a hard thing to do, even if you're watching a sci-fi show is trying to believably kind of represent how normal people would feel when faced with the unnatural because we're all coming in expecting as players expecting the unnatural to happen when you're watching a sci-fi TV show or you know a spooky TV show you're the, the viewers are expecting something to happen the expectation is you're going to see something weird so it's like that is such a fine line and a difficult thing to convey is like how this actually would affect people who aren't expecting this stuff to happen, the characters in the story. It's so tricky. Right. You know, it's it's yeah. hard to play. And yeah, you played it very well. You played it very and well. I feel like and Bobby... The, sorry, Bob, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, Bobby's coming from like a very concrete kind of like CIA, like just very fact, factual base, like, you know, chasing, chasing details that are just based in reality. So it's like, this is just something out of his, out of his depth. Well, I, I urge you, Francis, to to continue down that line. And that's not to say that you should continue that you should be um, delu uh, deluding yourself about the unnatural around you. Like, you know, you're seeing this stuff. You got to you got to deal with it. Right. But I would say continue your investigation into this in a way where you want to prove that it isn't unnatural and and find the reasons for these things in reality you've been so you've been on top of the and i think i might have cut you off last week of on this but you you wanted to go to city hall and i and i keep forgetting and kind of running over it but like yeah. that is an example of something that might give some concrete answers to things that seem supernatural uh keep on that line where you're like i'm going to investigate every detail of this because you're going to get answers that are important to the story so definitely right don't on. Yeah, don't just think like, oh, well, this is unnatural. It's out of my hands. Like, everything's going to be unknowable. Like, that's not true. You can keep doing no. your CIA thing and get into it. It's going to be perfect for the game. 
Um, you know like, what's interesting? I think we've talked a couple of times about the Palladium. Well, I, I've talked a couple of times about the Palladium game Beyond the Supernatural, which is kind of like a bridge. It's kind of a halfway point between Ghostbusters and Delta Green. And oh. it was a game that came out in the like the late 80s under the Palladium uh, publishing. It was, it's a game that I loved. But one of the classes in that game was a Nega Psychic. And it was someone who absolutely cannot be convinced that there that the un, unnatural exists at all. They cannot. There's their belief is completely unshakable, and as a result, they have this like crazy resistance to like psychic phenomena, phenomena, and everything. And it's like that's. I'm not saying that that's what Bobby is, but it's like that makes me think of that. It's it's like the it's the uh, the Scully you know in the Mulder and Scully partnership. It's just someone who. That's what I was feeling. Yeah, Scully like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It, it's important to the game, and it's it's something that has frustrated me from time to time in games I've run that aren't even just Cosmic Horror or Modern World. Like sometimes uh, it frustrates me when players just take such horrific shit like in stride because they're just playing a game, you know. Right. And I get it. I get <laughs> that. Like, oh yeah, we're just playing a game, and so oh, we're gonna do this. Like every once in a while, to stop and think, like. What on earth are we doing? Like, how is this okay that, like, you just tried to kill me because you were under some sort of spell and we're just going to be like, ah, it's fine. All right, let's keep adventuring through the woods. Like, you know, how are we not addressing some of these things? Um, So where we end up, though, after this meeting you guys have, which was fantastic. Oh, also, uh, Vicky and Christopher had a uh, meetup slash fight slash makeup slash another date so <laughs> it's a really interesting I'm kind so of hoping they get back together thing going on <laughs> with <laughs> are you on, yeah what is it are you on team vicky and christopher vicky plus I christopher totally totally uh, christopher <laughs> Vixtifer. Vixtifer. <laughs> Team Vixtifer. Uh or should Vicky go off on her own? Is this guy bad news? You know, this is these are interesting questions and Sydney, wonderful job with your bond work because these kind of things are gonna start to escalate even more as you delve more into what you just found out, which is all of you went back to the apartment, started digging again. You found an occult symbol that it should have been obvious the whole time, but somehow was missed. And then Vicky found a brown paper map, a map that seems to detail in someone's handwriting, a sketching of the blueprints of the building with tons of details all over it. And that's where we'll start right after the giveaway announcement, the official giveaway announcement, which is the all new uh, Arc Dream book that isn't even out yet called Iconoclasts. Iconoclasts. We just have a hard time saying that word. Uh, Iconoclasts. Uh, it is a new campaign coming out for Delta Green, a 206 page full cover hardback campaign. Uh, it is in the mo- modern era set in mid 2010s. I don't want to say anything else about it, but uh, it looks incredible and uh, it's not even out yet. And we're giving a copy away. So you will get it during the pre order or when the pre order shipments. Uh, finally go out so uh check out chat uh brennan will drop a link there follow that link to the giveaway site input your information and we will uh, announce a winner in chat before the end of the episode of who's going to get this first initial copy out the door of iconoclasts uh get excited get excited you guys want to do uh, another campaign right after this one we'll we'll, we'll just line it up <laughs> yeah, one after another the next one. yeah yep, i'm in. never want to stop <laughs> <laughs> can't stop won't stop ski it don't want to st- take a break. Just keep, <laughs> I don't want a single just, week of my life to go by without playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> well, as your handler, I'll, I'll Gatorade I'll, bottle by the chair. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't want to get up from this seat. Can't God, even, I'm not leaving. <laughs> can't even stand up. Uh, all right, let's, let's open it there then. We open it there with a brown paper uh, map that has been hand drawn and is uh, filled with information. I'm going to center this uh, on the investigation board and give us a chance to uh, to show it on screen on stream as much as we can of it. There's so much, but 
You guys, start reading through it, please, please, for me, for the audio audience, and start talking through. What are you seeing on this map? Well, there was something I was going to say last week, but then the episode ended. It's right near where the night floors are. Mm-hmm. It says, dead guy in mask. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what? Yeah, I've been freaking out about this all week because it se- it's like a dead map or whatever. Guy. And then, yeah, and like the most scribbly writing, you almost can't read it. Dead guy in mask. Oh, my God. Somewhere, it seems somewhere there says dead guy in a mask, like in this tunnel to the night floors. So here's what we see. There's the ground floor, which we assume that we are on. It's the normal ground floor. Don't forget, though, it says man with briefcase and white shoes on the ground floor. Yeah, and there's also roses and butter, which I assume are maybe the dog? The barking dog? Um, so it seems like it's pointing out in these apartments who's possibly in them. Then it goes to the first floor. Nobody doesn't say anybody's in the first floor. It just labels the apartments. And then in one of them, it says door on 7-12. I don't know what that yeah. means. July 12th. July 12th. Oh, like it appeared. Right. Maybe. There's a lot of X's, oh. too. Oh, this like... is so House of Leaves, too. This is oh, my nice. God. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, but the other thing is, too... Real quick, the masks figure very heavily into the play, The King in Yellow. That's like one of the one of the actual excerpts that they print in the book about it is like the lines like mentions the masks, a mask specifically. Then like I'm not wearing a mask. Like the, it's something that's something very big in that play. So. And if you and if you recall in uh, Roger Cumstone's opening scene in episode one on the airplane. The girl oh, turned God. to him at, during all this hubbub and very calmly, very serenely, while blood was coming from her head from hitting the, the luggage rack things, she just said, you can remove your mask, Roger. Oh. And he started ripping his own right. skin off, and that's where we blacked out of right. uh, 2019 Roger. Oh, God. Yeah, that's that's basically right from the play. Uh, then if we go up with, on the first floor through an apartment, it looks like there's a tunnel that leads to the night floors marked in red, whatever that is. But then off shooting the tunnel says the parlor, Mr. Castagu, Castagu? Castain. 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 It's fresh. It's fresh. It's fresh. It's fresh. And that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. Well. Wow. Where in Vicky's, uh, not Vicky, in uh, Abigail's apartment, where would that be on this map on the ground floor? Or is she on the first? Yeah, she's on the ground floor, right? She's on the ground floor, bottom right. Her door is where it says roses and butter. Oh, that way. You guys are standing where it's where the letters A P T are right now in the bottom right of the ground floor. That's where uh, you're standing. Where right is now. that X oh. that I'm pinging here, like around the corner? That's the, right in front of the doorway. But oh, roses and butter, there's that X, but what about the X below it? Like in right. her apartment? Roses and butter is pointing at the door. The X is right as you walk in the door. Okay, but there's three X's there. One looks like it's yeah. in a hallway. <coughs> oh, you I see, see what you're saying. Yeah, I, yeah. You, d- you don't know what that means. So can, we, can we walk to where that is? Just like holding the map, if it's in the apartment, can we like walk to around yeah. the corner? Mm-hmm. And nothing is different from what you've seen before. You've been through here multiple times, this exact pathway. Maybe these are maybe these are places that Abigail checked that don't have anything, you know, or something. Like maybe she was just marking other things that I don't know. Roses and butter. I mean we should leave the apartment, right, and see what that is. Well, it's dark now. I mean, we should probably head up to see if we can find the night floors. Messiah? Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, if we go to the second floor, we're going to have to get into someone's apartment. It looks like the that X where the night floors is, is on the, I'm saying second floor, on the first floor, that passageway is in someone's apartment. Whereas the passageway on the second floor looks like it's in a hallway, although it's not very clear. Yeah, it is a hallway. If you look, it, like up, down, yeah. it's near the 
It's Air. somewhere in the stairwell. So maybe yeah, before we go into someone's apartment, apartment, we just check that out. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Let's just see uh, if we see anything. <laughs> see if we see a dead guy in a mask. Vicky <laughs> takes her gun out and puts it in a holster. And <laughs> she take it out of a box. Well, she had and then it. put it in a holster. <laughs> I don't think. You, can you open carry? Can like a postal inspector open carry in the city? Maybe they can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then yeah. She Plus, just, you're deputized by the FBI. Oh right, that's true. Uh, then yeah, she just checks, opens the magazine, checks it, closes it, uh, and gets out a little <laughs> tactical flashlight uh, and clicks it on in in Comstone's face. <laughs> No, no reaction. She clicks it Com- off. Yeah, sunglasses on. He doesn't know what's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Troy, you forgot That's the cosplay. The shit. I'm sorry. That's he's why about I didn't to put on his sunglasses. <laughs> Stop doing that. Perfect. Just, <laughs> just in time for uh, seven p.m. You put, you, on, you put on your sunglasses. That's great. That's right. Off it. Uh, Stop doing uh, that. Okay. <laughs> it's weird. Go, this is another thing I meant to do last week, but I ended the episode. Um, I wanted to have that thrilling cliffy. All of you need to roll a sanity check uh, based on the uh, electricity. The electricity ah. being oh, right. on in the room when you know it's been shut down by the electric company. Oh, this is not good. I'm not feeling confident. Wait, is Bobby Bobby's outside still? Is, is, oh he, my is, God. is he rolling? Oh. 75. No, Bobby, you're just sitting outside. You're just sitting just, outside just right doing, now. Okay, good. Okay, and you, good. you can tell me <sighs> at any time. If you want to change that, you just tell me. Uh, I'll check in with you every once in a while. But I left you sitting on the <laughs> stoop with a paper cup of coffee trying to come down yeah. from a bunch of pills yeah. and whiskey. Bobby needs a minute. Bobby needs a minute. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Comstone, failure. One point of sanity damage. Over 64. Uh, Vicky. 47 under 63. And Neil. Uh, oh, 04 under 57. Wow. Ooh. Okay. I think I've made every Ooh. sanity roll so far. Yeah, I think you have. Damn. I mean, Neil's really keeping it together. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Cumstone is really shedding, shedding them fast. Um, you guys, do you want to project it, uh, Cumstone? Or do you want to take it? Um... Yeah, you know, I'll project it on to uh, Norma. Okay. That's um, only one point. Yeah, I'll eat the point. I'll eat the point. I'm going to wait until like, I save it until I'm getting close to a breaking point. Aren't you, though? Yes, but I'd rather have it be the, the straw that breaks the camel's back. That you use the projection. <laughs> yeah. Understood. Nice. Okay. You... Uh, just going through my stuff here. Okay. You are going to go and you're going to start heading up the stairs. Is that what you guys decided? The three yeah. of you? That's stairwell yeah, think, on the second floor. I think we also, you know, we're looking at the map and like when we walk out, roses and butter, whatever that is, keeping up my eyes peeled, flashlight, like a painting, you know, anything. Okay. This is the first any of you besides Roger have walked down this further than this apartment and oh, started yeah. to go up the stairs. Remember, as you walk along the corridor, you see a lavish sort of purple carpet uh, and very kind of nice but gaudy-ish uh, accoutrement along the walls that give this a vibe of like a grand hotel kind of thing, but it's all dusty and untouched and smells kind of stale and weird. You cross on your right a small booth where a payphone is and a curtain, a private phone booth with like a little wooden pew inside. You turn and begin to walk up the stairs, the stairs which are in the middle of the building. There are apartments flanking out to either side of the stairs. You head up to the first floor, technically speaking, second floor in our parlance, and you see, uh, and this is the floor where Lewis Post lives. And you continue up past that floor. You go up to the second floor. Uh, Roger was already up here searching for a dog and uh, didn't didn't hear anything. 
and you come up to that top floor. As you get there, you hear, Hello? Hello? Coming from above you, up the stairs. Roger reaches for his gun. Uh, Vicky signals to everybody and like keep keep moving I just want to see who it is like we're not going to answer Roger's got his gun drawn pointed out in front of him are you going up first Roger uh huh and I fire two warning shots (laughs) 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 I think Vicky I think Vicky also like gives Roger a look like you really want to like have the gun out showing (laughs) it He's got his hand on it. It's pulled out of its holster, and he's got it in his jacket. He's got it in his jacket? It's not pulled out? It's not pulled out, yeah. All right. Uh, He's like, yeah, I'll go first. Guess that makes me the leader. (laughs) He starts walking up. And he holds that look at Vicky for a little bit. And Vicky also just puts a hand on her gun, pulling her jacket back, looking at Roger. She know how to use that thing? (laughs) Oh. I say something to this guy? Let's see what he looks like. Then I'll say something. Okay, then you say something. All right, let's take a look. We start going up until we can, uh, in the direction of that voice. You get to the landing in the direction of that voice. You stop and turn, look up. Again, you've been here before, Roger. The plush carpeting continues up up into a flat landing with a big steel door that's just spray painted on it, roof access. And that's it. There's no no one up there. Roger puts up a hand. What was the what did the voice say? Hello? Hello? walk back down to right where we were when we heard the voice and Roger's like hey how are you you don't hear anything hey there we, we brought the roses and butter <laughs> <laughs> he looks at Vicky as to say was that cool Vicky goes I don't know what the hell you're doing <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> wait for it We've covered ourselves in roses and butter. <laughs> she, uh, party. Party. She, she's giving the she's giving the cut it out sign. <laughs> Stop talking. She pulls out the map, uh, shines a flashlight, and she goes, "Okay, clearly we're missing something. I mean, maybe the only way in is through this apartment on the on the first floor. Maybe we have to go through it to gain access. I don't I don't know if we're gonna get there upstairs. Is that um, what's his name's apartment? Lewis was on the Lewis's, first floor. Yeah. Lewis was on the that. first floor above Abigail's apartment. So do we know whose apartment this is? The, oh, it's not the Lewis. The, it is Lewis. not Lewis's apartment. It's across from Lewis's apartment. But Lewis's apartment does say door on 712, whatever that means. That's right. Um, What's today's date? August 16th, I believe. We're late. Uh, August 17th. Wait, when was when was uh, Abigail last seen? She was reported missing on June fourth. Last seen on June first. Mm, okay. And the milk expiration was when? March. March fifteenth. Um. Where were we standing when we heard that? Hello. Right where you're standing right now. In the stairwell. Or are we on a floor? Yeah. Well, you're you were on the second floor heading up to where the roof is there, there's that one more stairwell up and as you started to cross from the quote unquote top floor the second floor up to the roof access door you heard that come down from that stairway above you as if there was a voice on a floor above you okay let's go all the way back down to the first floor and let's just walk up again and try it again all right what about makeshift I walkie him. 
Agent Makeshift, this is Agent Maybelline. How you doing out there? Go for Makeshift. I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm leveling out. I'm leveling out. Well, uh, what, what do you guys need? What's going on up there? We're checking if you're ready to come back in. How you feel? Uh, I'm ready. I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm ready. I can come. Vicky's holding the walkie out to, to Murdo and the uh, Messiah and is like, do you think he's ready? Makeshift, this is Messiah. Uh, is there a, like a convenience store nearby? <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a, there's a bodega on the corner. Could you get me a pack of marble mediums? <laughs> Then come on up and meet us uh, outside of Abigail's apartment. You guys want anything? <laughs> <laughs> One, I'll just marble mediums. I'll have a Diet Mountain Dew. And a de- see if they have Diet Mountain Dew. Can you see if <clears throat> can you see if they have any bananas? Um, my calves are killing me, and I need the potassium I didn't have one at lunch today. <sighs> and the, the half right. nut would like some bananas. <laughs> Just one right. banana. And if a they bushel have a of cat, bananas for Maybelline. Stop talking on the walk. <laughs> a Diet Mountain Dew and a pack of marble mediums. And then come inside and hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, copy. I'm going to the bodega. Uh, give me 10 minutes. Bobby goes to the bodega, grabs, <laughs> grabs everything, grabs the banana, heads upstairs. Uh, rather, up, 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 uh, up, up, up n- to the no, door. No, 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 no. No. Luck roll for the bananas. <laughs> I was going to say luck roll for the Diet yeah, Mountain Dew. Right. It's 8 o'clock at night. There's, there's no <laughs> bananas. True, they, they probably threw right those up. bananas up. <laughs> What'd you get, I Francis? Got, uh, 40. Bananas? 40. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you just needed yeah, 50 or 40. lower. One last banana. Oh, okay. There we right. go. You got Congratulations. You got bananas. Uh, so <laughs> Bobby grabs the bananas. Marlboro Mediums. And what, what what did Myrna need? He needed a Diet, Diet Mountain Dew. Diet Mountain Dew, please. Diet Mountain Dew. Bodega guy. Diet Mountain Dew. All right, there you go. Uh, grabs everything. Heads back to uh, the apartment building. Right outside the door. Opens it up. Heads up the stairs. Well, you right. guys They're meet there. in front of Abigail's apartment. So now oh, you're in the hallway in front of her apartment. And he passes out. Banana. Diet Mountain Dew, Mar- pack of Marbo and Mediums. Box Rod- or pack? It's a, just a pack, but Roger's like, just a pack. did I say Marbo Mediums? <laughs> God damn it, yeah. Yes, you did. You said Marbo Mediums. Uh, these are fine. <laughs> <Jesus Christ>. All right. <laughs> Starts packing, packing them. Cellophane, <laughs> lucky. Uh, Bobby, Bobby gets his hand on his gun. He, Bobby's got a gun. Bobby's just being ready. He's being prepared. So he looks to Richie and uh, what, what's what's the deal? What are we what are we looking at here? We found this, and she shows him the map. We're trying to figure out how to get access to whatever these night floors are. We tried going up the second second story stair set but uh, we heard a voice as if there was another person up top but it's just the roof access so we're thinking maybe we try again and if we talk to them uh, maybe there's like an access code or something that you get in and if not we um we try through this apartment and, and see whatever this tunnel is I don't, I don't know okay all right you up for this buddy yes yeah yeah Let's, yes, you lead the way. <clears throat> All right, follow the leader. Roger retraces their steps. Retraces back up to where you were going. You get up to that third floor, second floor, whatever. It's very confusing. The third floor, I'm calling it the third floor. And you cross that area and you don't hear a voice. And you continue to go up and you get to that landing and you look roof access top of the building. I push the roof access door just to see. Vicky walks up, puts her hand on the roof access door. Click. And pushes it open.
This happens in slow motion. The door slowly opens. And Vicky sees all across, spreading out in front of her, what looks like a huge open room that is completely unexplainable. It is covered in large mahogany chairs little coffee tables all over you see a burning hearth in the distance with a crackling fire and you hear very slight somewhat distant sound of music playing <laughs> It looks like a men's, gentleman's lounge from another era. As if it's right off of the fucking Titanic or something. <laughs> you see a pallid haze of smoke in the air. And you don't see a soul. Give me a sanity check. <laughs> I just look at Sydney's face. I need that sanity check. <laughs> oh god! This oh, is it. No. All of us are just Sid. Sid to start. 70, Seventy-five over sixty-three. That's about right. Okay. Seventy-five over sixty-three. You see this place. You hear this music playing, and all of you see it. Roger, you're you're standing right there, and you, the music starts dribbling out. You roll a sanity roll as the one who was already up here and knew that that opened to the roof. Pass. 38 under 63. Oh, Why is it? How is it that suddenly something so unnatural is so normal? Roger says to uh, Maybelline, we still just doing recon? <laughs> the color is like out of her face. She just turns around and is like, it's, it's supposed to be the roof. And she's looking at Murdow. Nah, Skid, have you seen this? Are you far enough down the stairs? Can you see into the room? What do you think? I, where I are think you? I think I can't. Because I'm in the rear, so... Yeah, and you'd be down a few steps. Only two people could fit on that landing. And as far as I know, you've only opened the door and looked in. Yeah, and he just kind of, like, raises his, his hand, like, what, what are you talking about? Like, what do you see? Uh, and Vicky's going to walk into the room. Like in a daze, like just like it has to touch something to know if it's real. Like arms out, walking in, wide eyed, mouth open. She walks into the room and the door begins to just close behind her. Oh. Roger, what do you do? The door is closing <laughs> behind her. Oh, God. Roger just uh, leaps forward and uh, sticks his his foot in there uh, to stop it. The same foot where the shoe fell off when he came up here the first time. And your ankle's still sore. Yeah. Uh, like, all right. It's only been a day. Uh, uh, stops it, holds it open. Uh, and he says, ho, 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 Maybelline. Don't you go notice so his, You notice his voice is dim, hard to hear. Maybelline. <laughs> Hey, Maybelline, slow down. And she slowly, like, turns around, still in a daze, and sort of, like, wanders back towards Roger. Uh, you see he's holding a door open, and you can see the other side of the door is, like, an ornate, uh, like, oaken door. And next to it is a grandfather clock that's <laughs> just decorating the side wall your head turns for a second and you see a bar 
in the far corner. Picture this mm -hmm. as the size of the roof, basically. As mm -hmm. the size of half of the roof, like a full apartment size, basically. Wide open lounge. And in the far corner, you see a wet bar with like freshly cleaned glasses, bottles, and like fresh bar accoutrement, uh, limes and, and lemon peels and shit like that, uh, bitters, like uh, cherries and shit, like all in the corner as if it's to serve a party or something. Is there a bartender? And there's no bartender, it's just empty. Uh, Joe I'm Turkle. At, I, I'm picturing it like, like <laughs> you know, the, the glasses and the bottles, everything is like sparkling almost, like Gilded Age Americana, yes. like. Um, That's she, what you see. And again, I talked about the hearth, there's also a, a full wall of just books. Just books and books and books and books on one wall. I think she like whim whispers, like almost like a little whimper out and just goes, Hello? Hello? There's no response from within the night floors, but I don't know if Roderick even hears that or if, uh, yeah, if Roger even hears that. Rod's just watching her and sees that she's, like, not even super aware of his presence. If I look back, do I just see into the hallway where uh, Murnau and Makeshift are? Yeah, Murnau's right down there, and he doesn't know what's going on up there. Yeah. He's like, Messiah, what's happening? <laughs> and Messiah just looks, and maybe he said, uh, Murnau sounds distant to him as well. And he's just drawn back to this music. And then he turns back and looks at makeshift and knows what Saint makeshift is in. <laughs> makeshift is jaw to the floor, hand under the gun, breathing, it, it, like hyperventilating, basically. <laughs> What's that? And then and, I think with yeah. a, a shaky hand, uh, Maybelline is like going into her side pocket of her jacket, like trying to, like eyes forward, trying to fish something out. And she takes out the Polaroid camera and like shakily takes a picture of the the room <laughs> and the flash like she like is kind of shaken out of whatever trance she was in but and then she like gets a little nervous now like not slow-mo anymore and she like whips around and and looks for for agent messiah nervously like scared that she's trapped and messiah just reaches out his hand and she clasps it like through the doorway, just clasps his arm and hand. And he pulls her back through into the apartment building. And the door shuts behind her. <laughs> Jesus. And you're all back in the regular apartment building right outside of this door. Do you see that? Do you see that? Who oh, saw shit, that? What? Uh -oh. Oh, shit, what? Oh, shit, what? It's all right. It's all right. It's what we thought. No. No, 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 no. We thought that there was a, 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 a hallway. or no, that, That's supposed no, to be the roof. No, that's the night floors. Listen. I don't know if we open that door right now, if it's going to go right back in there, but something happens to this place at night, and it's through that door. It was some sort of lounge, but like a like a gentleman's lounge. And I just got this sense that there was a party about to happen. There's a fireplace. There was a there fireplace. There was a fire. If I touched, this. if I reached my hand into it, I would have burned. The room was warm. Books, lots of books. There was bar. a full bar. This, there was a full bar. This, All sorts of bitters. This, this can't be. This this is not possible. This Murnau. Neil, uh, Murnau and Makeshift give me sanity rolls. <laughs> as they describe Jesus. to you what they just saw. Man, 44 oh, under 57. Oh, nice. Oh, Critical. Oh, that is 96. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, makeshift. Just hearing yeah. about it. Dude, this is I'm so just, makeshift. He is just oh, God. Oh, is such yeah, bad, that is such bad that shape is, anyway right now. Is, that oh. is. Oh, okay. Um, you take one yeah. point of sanity damage. 
Uh, Joe, did I take any sand damage? You never resolved mine, but I did fail the one that I did. Oh, just now in the in that lounge? In the room, yeah. Oh, I thought you succeeded. No, I failed. Oh god. Did I? Uh, no, yeah, you were 70, you... 75 over 63. Oh, that's right. I got reversed. Okay. Uh <gasps> You take that's... four points of sanity damage, oh and I God. think you, like, you were already playing that as your yeah. character, so good uh... on you, and you can project that. Chris is gonna get it. Yeah, maybe I... Shit. <laughs> maybe I do project it on Do you have Chris. two bonds or three? You got Chris and your sponsor. Three. Yeah, Chris, my sponsor, Sarah, and then Carl, who is a security guard at work, who is a good friend of mine. Who we okay. Haven't seen, we haven't well, seen yeah, we yet. forgot about Carl. We got to we got to introduce Carl. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, are you gonna project? I think I'm gonna have to project that one on Christopher. Oh, <sighs> I was so hoping for you guys. I know this is like. Doom. Okay, yes. uh, go ahead and roll a d4. Three. Okay, so you reduce that by three. You harm your bond with Christopher by three, which you're going to need to play out in a future scene, and you take three points of willpower point damage. Oh, oh man. Which means what this did to you mentally was so jarring that it's starting to... You'll recover those as you rest, but it's like you are feeling exhausted yeah. by that experience. Uh, all right, sorry, I will get out of the way. Tell me, what does everybody do? I need a cigarette. I need a cigarette. This is, this yeah. is crazy. Do this you like crazy. marble Let's... mediums? I do whatever, 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 whatever. They're not my favorite. Smoking. And there's, Neil, there's gotta be... Neil is looking, because she took the photo, so he's just like reaching out <laughs> to, to, to like kind of uh, questioningly if, like, if he can look at the picture she took. Yeah, it's just, you, it prints out, and you pull it out, and it's not exposed yet. It's still kind of white. And she gives it to she gives it to Agent Murnau. I, I can't look at it. Don't tell me what it All looks right. like. He's sorry. He's like flapping it, shaking it like a Polaroid picture. He's flapping, 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 <laughs> flapping, flapping, <laughs> flapping. You there's, as it starts to resolve. The image, you see bookshelves, you see <laughs> chairs, you see, it's washed a lot of color, but like you see what she was describing. And you see a bright sort of halo of light behind the bar. <laughs> and you see two different like halos of light, like uh, lines of light on two chairs in the middle of the room that seem to almost have a humanoid shape to them, like the light. <laughs> what do you see, Murnau? What do you see? Oh, I'll say one more thing you see. On the coffee table in front of the two sort of like lit uh, uh, auras is a better word instead of halos, auras, you see on the table a small uh, cocktail napkin and a martini glass is on the table. <sighs> oh, man. He, like, tilts the photo so that Messiah can see it. And his, heart is, his heart is beating faster because this is, you know, terrifying, but it's also just the kind of thing that he's drawn to. And he wants to go in. There. <laughs> oh, and neither of you, uh, Ma um, Messiah or Maybelline, saw anyone or a glass. In That's that what room. I was going to say. Uh, do uh, I see the same thing he sees, though, when he tilts it? In the picture, the yeah. You see it in the picture. And uh, Roger pulls a cigarette out of his mouth. He's like, we weren't alone in there. It's because we didn't drape ourselves in roses and butter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, obviously, I'm being facetious, but 
we're not allowed to see for some reason. Wonder if they could see us. Do you think they could? I don't know. Maybe Murnau's right. Maybe we gotta go back in. Take some more pictures. Yeah. Make I'd like to see this. Wait, wait, I'd like wait, to see wait, this wait, for wait. myself. And he pops, he wait, pulls wait. out his, no wait, he pulls out his Polaroid camera. <laughs> pops it open. <laughs> and he's like, ready to go in. Yeah. <laughs> let's, Bobby interjects, let's, let's take a beat here, okay? What, what are we seeing in this photo? Who is in there? Who are we talking about? None of this makes any sense. We got to find out what's going on with this building, right? Like what, like what, what is happening? As he describes it, and you look at the photo, you see the aura from behind the bar and the aura from the two chairs is getting brighter and brighter and brighter and it's beginning to overexpose the image from these points you start to see as if it was too much light like it's starting to wash out everything around it it's like the polaroid exposed you could see it and now it's beginning to overexpose with those being the sources from which the overexposure is happening wow okay maybe makeshift has a point Starting to think maybe we shouldn't go back in. How are we supposed Let's, to find Abigail if we can't even see who's on the night floors? I don't understand. I, 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 I. We gotta find out how people like City Lewis Hall. can see. City Hall is not gonna tell us what we need to know. Makeshift. We, pull it together. we need to look. We need to look at the plans. There's got to be an explanation for this building. What is going on in this building? What is making this building? Supernatural? I don't know, but there's got to be answers. There's no way this has just happened. Let's go check out the apartment on the first floor. Go check out what? We want answers. Somebody in there will answer. Uh, He wants to go to the apartment where it says, like, there's the passage to the night floors. Mm -hmm. He's like, come on. And he just goes. And he gets there and it's just like, bum, 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 bum. You hear after two loud knocks click the door the doorknob turns and the door slowly opens the face that you see behind the door I will drop on the uh, on roll 20 is sorry i've lost it here is familiar to neil (gasps) oh it's michelle van fitz from the article (laughs) she she opens up the door and the chain is on and she looks at you past the chain yes And she's looking at all four of you. Neil, so she's not she's not supposed to be living in this building at all, right? As she far is, as I this, know. This is her apartment, as far as okay, you know. All right. Yeah. Okay. And so yeah, Neil is uh it's like Miss Van Fitz. Who's asking? Hi, um, my name's Neil Bachman. Uh, I'm, I believe we have an acquaintance in common. I'm very good friends with Fran Harris Bernstein. I don't know that name. And he pulls out the article. Like, we'll say he tore the article out of the magazine. It's it folded up in his pocket along with his Polaroids. And he pulls it out. And shows it to her with her photograph on it and says I'm sorry this doesn't look familiar to you no I do a lot of interviews I don't read about them what can I help you with 
I'm very busy. We're looking for Abigail. Abigail. That's right. Who are you? I'm Neil Bachman. Um, I, you may have seen some of my films. That's not important. <laughs> We're friends. We're friends. We're friends of Abigail's. We're just, we, she's been missing for a while and we're just trying to track her down. Well, friends of Abigail's, don't worry. She doesn't need you. She's fine. We know that she's fine. We just wanted to visit her, but we're... (sighs) We need to go to the 12th floor. Do you? Yes, we do. And you're really making this a long process. We'd like to just go through if that's okay with you. No, I'm sorry. It's not. Well, then I have to go through the parlor. Precisely. (laughs) Roger is just watching that chain like a hawk and slowly (laughs) sliding his foot towards the, uh, the opening. And he's getting ready to grab that chain and rip it straight <laughs> off the wall. <laughs> Vicky sees watching. out of the corner of her eye that Roger is like making a move and she's now like just distracting uh, this woman, Michelle. And she goes, what was your first name, Michelle? I'm I'm sorry, I am I don't know your work. Um, what makes you so important that I can't get through? I know that there's a way in there. Uh, sorry, I, I was distracted by, by Troy's over aggressive gameplay. Let me just. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I think that she are. needs she needs a roll to see if she notices you trying to break in her apartment. She's already highly suspicious, doesn't trust you at all, and doesn't like you in the least. So if you're edging a foot toward there, it's a different thing if you tell me you're preparing to kick the door in while her face is right there. Like that, I don't think she would see coming. But if you're sliding your foot forward, she's going to uh, get a roll. Um, Do I against my stealth? Yes, yeah, an opposed roll against your stealth. So let's see how we do. Okay. Ha! 40 under 70. 82 over 40. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, so, yeah, she doesn't see it. She's focused down. on Vicky. So, Vicky, once again, what was your question? And what was your name, Michelle? I'm sorry. I'm not familiar with your work. What makes you so important that I can't have access through there? I know how to get there. Just open the door. This is my apartment. Are you trying to break into my apartment? You have your own entrance through the parlor. I suggest you use it. And she starts to close the door. He sticks a foot in, grabs the chain, and just fucking pulls it out! <laughs> when he does that. I mean, you need pretty unnatural strength to do this. Let's. We're talking give about it. Roger Comstock. I know. Yeah. Let's give it a roll, <laughs> Zony. All right, uh, so. Strength times five. Unless you want to use something else, you tell me. Well, he's so ridiculous. Well, this is my first option is just, he, he's an idiot. So he just grabs at the fucking chain and tries to, like, use brute strength. Uh, pulling the chain from the outside is one of the hardest ways possible to rip it off the wall. Uh, his next thing is just going to be to kick it open, but he's, okay. he's just trying to use... Uh, it would be pretty crazy. badass if you could just pull the chain off. Like, just yank the that there? right it's out. It's a 43 under 85. <laughs> <laughs> Your Damn. strength is 85? <laughs> He's got a 17 strength. He's 43 <laughs> under 85. Amazing. He's crazy strong. <laughs> yeah, he's crazy strong. He's a giant. Uh, so you, <laughs> wow, you rip this chain inexplicably <laughs> off the wall with your superhuman strength. And she's just like, ah, 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 it starts falling back. And I literally just broke my chair. I don't think I can finish the episode. <laughs> oh, I shattered oh, no. this old oh, wooden no. chair. How did you oh, shatter my mother in law's chair? That's, so, that's intense. I'll tell her it was mess. in the scene. It was just a scene. She doesn't. 
understand. Yeah. It's for getting the trunk. <laughs> That's I to be a doctor. <laughs> Come so on. Well, I was playing a role playing chair. game with my friends. <laughs> wow. Um, I was gonna say when uh when Cumstone does that, as soon as he rips the board down. I have to do the rest of the episode on my knees. (laughs) (laughs) There's no other chairs within distance. (laughs) Okay, sorry. Go ahead. (laughs) When Comstone does that, as soon as he rips it down, Vicky just shoulders into the door because she was right there too. Okay, Okay. all right. You know what? Everybody's going to have to calm down here. We're going to have to do some initiative. All right? You can't just (laughs) do whatever you feel like. This is his mom. There are rules. (laughs) (laughs) This isn't mom. (laughs) Oh, boy. Uh, 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 Michelle's got four guns because we do. (laughs) uh yeah it's it's gonna be i think kind of short but let's let's just see um uh i'll prepare this and all right so everybody's um initiative is going to be their dexterity score uh unless i'm mistaken it would be great if you i I also cut myself on the shard of wood that is sticking out of the side (laughs) and now i'm bleeding Uh, you know what anything for the show sid the show must go on (laughs) you can take a break you can take a break you got some uh, medical no, attention. No breaks. You bleed. It's not his contract. It's not, <laughs> not his contract. Our insurance doesn't cover cuts. All right. <laughs> Active chair. <laughs> let's get, let's get some uh, initiative scores from everybody. Uh, first, Vicky, uh, what is your dexterity? Uh, your your flat dexterity score. It's eleven. Eleven. Okay, Raj. Eleven as well. He's stronger uh, than he is dexterous. Bobby. Yeah, 11 again. 11, and Neil? Nine. Nine. Uh, okay. So, Roger rips at <laughs> the chain. Vicky, ba- <laughs> like, bashes into the door. She's like, ah! And begins falling back. Bobby, you get a quick action. What do you do in this instant? And saying you just stand there is an option. I'm just giving it to you but I'm 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 Bobby's on alert he's pulling his he's pulling his piece he's ready <laughs> he's gone out he's he's ready for whatever he's he's looking at he's looking at the lady in. he's looking behind the door I'm ready I'm bringing in the epic combat music as Bobby pulls his gun out <laughs> right she starts falling back it's her turn she pivots and starts running to the back of her apartment. Mm -mm. As this door comes in, you can just see there are books everywhere. Every wall is lined with books. And in the back where she's running, there is a fireplace that is slowly burning. And it does seem, at first glance, like an unnaturally large apartment. Like oh. something is oh, not oh, right no. with the dimensions of the House of Leaves! No. 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 <laughs> she runs to the back of the room and it is and it is Neil's turn. Uh Neil, I he's totally taken by surprise by all of this. So he's totally. just like, ah, he is just frozen in place. Just like watching all this play out. He doesn't do anything. Okay. Uh, and then it is Vicky's turn. She is now probably 10 meters away from you across the floor, the, the whole place, basically. I mean, Vicky is going to sprint and tackle her. Just okay. straight up police tackle. Oh, sweet. Okay. Uh, give me an athletics roll. Um, I don't think that you can get there and tackle her, but let's see what your roll is. And if you crush it, uh, I'll give it to you. I don't have great athletics, uh, oh, but let's, no. let's try. Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. no, that's 40 over 30. Okay, so you are uh, able to run right out to her and you're right behind her, like right behind her. You just don't have the spring to tackle her and it is Roger's turn. All right, so she's running towards the back of the room, right? Yeah, she has reached to the back of the room uh, where there's like a fireplace. She's running right at the fireplace, and Vicky's now right behind her, a meter behind her. Okay. Um, I was going to do the same thing, uh, but just to mix it up a little bit. 
Yeah, no, I think my, my gut reaction is to do the same thing, just to like, uh, she's trying to score a touchdown and Roger's just like, gonna leg tackle her, like just, boom, <laughs> uh, nail her from behind. So, uh, uh, okay. I'll roll athletics and see what happens. Uh, 26 under 60. 26 <laughs> under 60. Uh, <laughs> you... Do they have uh, hard success at extreme success or? No. No, it's just success. Crits and... Or crit. Although the higher your roll is, the better a success it is. So if you roll like 59 under 60, that's it the would, best it would edge out something that's like 40 oh, under 60. interesting. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I apologize. Yeah, I, I, I got this a little bit wrong in terms of the distances. You can cover that distance uh, easily enough. So with that athletics roll, you are able to tackle her. So she's running and she reaches up toward the fireplace and you see, Vicky, as you're closing in, that over the fireplace is some sort of... uh, Oh, I had it written down here. Uh, It's some sort of like... Native American tomahawk is like <gasps> over the fireplace and she's running to reach for it presumably to use this as as a, some sort of weapon and just as her hand gets to it boom this like 30 year old woman gets jacked by a special fr- she's a feminist poet and writer and she gets jacked in the back of the legs by Roger Comstone running at full speed who plows her into the fireplace so she's oh like God. first thing that happens is she hits her mouth on the marble freaking uh, Oh, no. uh, mantle, mantle of the fireplace. Oh, my Explosion God. of teeth. Her oh. body then <laughs> flies into the fireplace. Oh, Roger God. holding her around her legs. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. This is so oh. Oh. This is horrific. This, this is, is horrific. so horrific. Talk about the things not on my prep list for tonight. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And she's in the flames, and it's oh, Bobby's oh. turn. <laughs> Oh God! The fire this is woman. on. Yeah, she's oh. in the flames. The oh, fire no. is cooking. Jesus Christ! Oh, Bobby's oh, no. shocked. <laughs> Bobby is freaking the fuck out. He's got his gun drawn. He's watching the scene. He doesn't. He he can't. He doesn't have a shot. He doesn't know what to do. He's just watching everything happen and horrified. Frozen. Frozen in horror. Frozen. Frozen Michelle. in horror. Burning alive! She's burning alive. <laughs> She's Jesus screaming Christ. in agony and is now fighting to get out of uh, of Roger's grip. So, uh, I just put this thing away like a dope. Um, let's do an opposed roll, and uh, I will try to break out of it. Opposed uh, athletics roll? Yeah, let's just do that for now. I, I don't... Oh, you know what? Let's do uh, hand-to-hand. Is there a hand-to-hand? No. I'm blanking. I don't remember. It's like brawling. It's oh, not brawling. That's uh, unarmed Cthulhu. combat, right? Unarmed combat. That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Let's do opposed unarmed combat rolls. Okay. Uh, but I'll tell you this. I'm not liking her chances. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, she's, oh, really? she's going against the third former Green Beret. Yeah. <laughs> she starts flailing around and she rolls a 90. So I really don't think it matters. Oh, I rolled an oh, 8 God. under 60. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Just fucking hammer locks her. Yeah, <laughs> she is. Uh, I could tell you, metagame wise, that she took a point of damage from the uh, thingy. She just took four points of damage from the fire, uh, oh, God. and it's uh, her skin is burning right off. It is a big, hot fire, like kind of an absurd fireplace to have in an apartment, especially in the, in the summer. summer. It just doesn't make any sense, but it's. Roger, your face is right next to it. You can feel the heat emanating off of it. You're grabbing her legs. She's squealing and, and trying to scramble away from you, but you've got her in a lock. What do you do? Uh, oh, God, it's my turn. Uh, Roger just sees her, uh, like, burning. Her face is burning, and he's, uh, he's trying to keep it together, and he's just like, take off your mask! And he just fucking... <gasps> 
slams her out of the fire, like onto the floor. He just tries to like <laughs> oh my God. fucking tackle her so that he's on top of her and she's completely subdued. Okay, roll uh, athletics so, or uh, roll unarmed combat. Okay, it's the same for me. So, oh God. Uh, 54 under 60. Nice. Okay, so you do that. Nice. You rip her out of the fire. She, and then shoot her. Bam, down on the floor. You've got her pinned down. Uh, her clothes, like near her neck, are uh, on fire. Not like flaming, okay. but like they're starting to smolder. And uh, she's screaming as her hair is burning. The smell is oh. moving through uh, the apartment, the terrible smell. And it's Neil's turn. Neil is sort of like broken out of his his paralysis seeing this happen and his heart sinks because he's like all this weird shit that we've already seen today and now you know we've seen this person here that he knows who she is this is a, the, uh, someone of uh, like a high profile person and we've just broken into her house and set her on fire so <laughs> we have to like, figure out how to deal with this on top of everything else so he run, he's going to run into the apartment and try to put out the fire, like grab like a, a, a row rug or anything to like kind of like pat her down. To like she, has like a, uh, she has like a she has like a a blanket that just is like uh, decorative and folded over her couch, you know, yeah. like the top of her couch. Yeah. So uh, to like cuddle up by the fire kind of blanket. So you could grab that and like throw it on her and start patting. Yeah, it. he starts yeah, doing that. Like, I got a spicy kibasa here, Mona. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh god she's fighting you're putting out the flames and it's vicky's turn um i think vicky is like also assisting with putting out the flames but is it, roger are you on top of her still yeah i've got her in like a lock where she's she's subdued my next move would be to try and like hog tie or some yeah, I think maybe if, if I see Neil running to get like a blanket, I think Vicky will run to fill something with water and to just also douse some water onto her. Okay. Uh, you run into the kitchen? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, and let's see. Uh, just checking something really fast. Uh, okay, sounds good. Uh, yeah, you get into the kitchen, and uh, it looks pretty neat, pretty clean, and um, you don't see any water out. What do you... I just throw the tap on and, and fill, like, something up with water. Fill, okay, there's nothing out to fill with water. Uh, so I you, open you start opening open cabinets? Yeah, 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 yeah I open a cabinet. Empty. 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 I open Jesus. more cabinets. Empty. 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 <laughs> it is Roger's turn. <laughs> What's the milk situation in there, Emily? <laughs> I go to the fridge. I open the fridge. You open the fridge. Milk. I take it. Expired. I take it. Okay. You take the milk. I dump it uh, on. Well, you, you need another turn. Eventually. Would you eventually. Stop? <laughs> Would you stop? What is the milk? <laughs> It's no. expired! <laughs> and he just starts pushing her face in the carpet. What is the deal with expired milk? <laughs> what is wrong with you, baby? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's screaming. Oh, God. Uh, it's Bobby's turn. God, I, Bobby is got his gun out. He's, he's just... Okay, he's looking around the room. Is there any other doorways to the room anything like he's looking for if somebody's gonna pop out or if somebody else is in this All giant right, hold on room a second. you're not okay. in the apartment you're outside okay. the apartment looking in oh okay okay, you come okay. In the apartment. i'm looking inside yes yes i come inside do you, i'm do coming you close inside. the door behind you do you leave the door open i leave the door open you come I'm into the apartment and you going. start looking for like entrances exits you're checking your corners yeah, i'm and checking you, the corners you look past around where Vicky is and you see that it seems to wrap around and then open up into like a larger space. But you don't see any doorways per se. You just see that the apartment does go deeper than this living room area where everyone is now uh, brawling. Uh -huh. Shit. Uh -huh. and, sorry, that, that's going to be your turn because moving is an action. Oh, yeah. So you All move right. in, you <laughs> yeah. see this, and you're the one who's looking around for other stuff, and you're taking in that this apartment does go deeper uh, in. Uh, uh, next, it's 
Her turn. Again, she tries with all of her strength to fight against Roger to break free of this. She is lashing and lashing and and, uh, just you hear these horrific screams coming from under the blanket. Just this like, "Ah! Ah! Ah!" (laughs) like horrible. (laughs) And uh, she fails. Uh. And it is Neil's turn. Neil, you have successfully blotted out the flames. If you pull the blanket back, you see her eyes are wide and her mouth is opening like ha, ah! like 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 a like uh, like an animal almost, and she is uh, screaming in your ear. But you see the the fire where it was on her uh, clothes and her hair. It seems to be dousing going out. Okay, uh, so yeah, he's gonna pull the blanket back, and he's just gonna just medical doctor's instincts. He's just going to see what parts of her body have been burned and how badly. Okay. Uh, You can see on her neck on both sides, the backs of her ears, they already seem to be bubbling a little bit, the skin, just a little bit, uh, and her hair. That really seems to be the worst of it. Okay. Okay. This is just like, hold her still. Hold her still. And it's Vicky's turn. plan. Vicky runs in and the blanket's off and Neil Bachman is looking at her face and Vicky just pours the expired milk onto her head. <laughs> oh, and Neil's just like, as it's Neil. happening, as it's happening, he's just like, no, 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 not milk. It's as he's pouring it, he's just like, <laughs> and then it's just, no, 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 no. And then she's, oh, whoa, like you're waterboarding her. She's like, no, 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 just milk pouring on her face. Just, what just, is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Vicky, Vicky looks, Vicky looks at, Vicky looks at, She's like, I panicked. I panicked. And by the way, as she's saying that, the gallon is still upside down and it's still pouring (laughs) into her mouth. Turns it back over. Stop. Stop the board. Roger. (laughs) Francis's camera is frozen in like the (laughs) utmost face of joy. (laughs) It really is. He's so overjoyed. I can't believe it. All right, so Roger is like, I got to end this. And so he just starts going into like street combat, ultimate fighter mode. And he realizes he has her back. And so he's just going to go for a rear naked choke to 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 knock her unconscious. Put her to sleep. So he's like climbing over and he cinches cinches it in to fucking squeeze off her airwaves. Uh, Let's grin in her ear, go to sleep. Uh, go to sleep. Critical 55 under 60. Oh, oh my god. And you snap her god. <laughs> no, I, I can't let that happen. Uh, no, it's in his goal. No, it's in his goal. You start choking her out. <laughs> With the critical success, uh, I'll say she takes a, a hefty penalty to this roll um, to break out. So she, oh wait, it's Bobby's turn. But my goal was oh, to God. lock off her airwave too. So she's, um, she should be oh, un- unconscious well aware. <laughs> I'm, uh, so, so I'm just watching this go down. I mean, Jesus, uh, the, are the, the room is clear. The room is clear. There's no other, there's no other threats in the room. I cleared the, or at least I've looked around this area. I saw that the you can the move in deeper if you want <laughs> oh, no. to where that open area is. Oh God! I think Bobby's gonna stay with the group for now. <laughs> I think okay, Bobby's so gonna stay, stay with, with the group for now. <laughs> yeah, he's watching you, as uh, uh, you're Messiah watching as this chokes her out. Green beret chokes <laughs> out this poet. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Why do you have to put it like we that? We just <laughs> broke into this woman's house, curb stomped her, burned yeah, seriously, her, and you then basically... <laughs> waterboarded her with uh, rotten milk. Okay, with we milk. <laughs> You know what? Once again, Francis, thank you for summing it up in the best possible way. You broke into this woman's apartment, curb stomped her, waterboarded her, and now you're choking her out. Uh, And now, yeah, this is good. Vicky points out that to get blood out of fabric, you dunk it in milk. So that's all I'm saying. She had blood all over her blouse. Uh, That's true, but it can if you put it on a serious burn, it can get an infection. (laughs) God, that's all. Uh, they're having this okay. argument while she's like, yeah, while <laughs> she's like trying, <laughs> fighting for her life. It's gonna be her turn, Francis. Why don't you go ahead and uh, just leave Skype and then come back in, see if that'll reset your oh, video. I'm frozen. And oh, we'll shit. go okay. to yeah, you're still frozen. And we'll go to Michelle, who is the last vestiges 
of her life attempts <laughs> to break free. She basically needs a natural one out of a hundred. 84. Oh. So she, she goes down even faster than expected. She's just, <laughs> and, then, and then that like couple twitches as like her air starts to go out and she falls unconscious. The fuck are we doing? Anybody got plastic cuffs? What? Plastic cuffs. She'll be awake in no time. I, let's yes. just, let's tie her up. Yeah, I do. Give me two seconds. Jesus. Come on, uh, Maybelline, she, come on. She takes uh, the zip tie out and makes the cuff uh, and puts it on her. Get her legs too. <laughs> she zip ties. Bobby's keeping his gun trained on her. Her legs. Um. Oh, uh, Vicky looks at the tomahawk actually real quick above the fireplace. You go over and look at the tomahawk over the fireplace. It looks like um, uh, yeah, an uh, an antique of a Native American. Um, uh, I mean, it depends. Do you know anything about that culture or or anything? No. Okay, I do. Neil does. Uh, Neil does. Uh, all right, give me a roll, buddy. You got history or uh, this? Is, well, it's going to do anthropology. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah, I could do anthropology, but I was just saying, like, he spent a lot of his life uh, in the American Southwest, so maybe. Uh, twenty-five over twenty. Hmm. Yeah, you can just identify it as a Native American tomahawk. You can't really identify the tribe with that role, but uh, well, Neil, for, he's going to go try to find the bathroom uh, and start running. If he can find it, he's going to run cool water in the bathtub, and he's going to go. His intention is to go into the medicine cabinet try to find some like Vaseline. Okay. Um... She's unconscious. Uh, are you sure she's stable, Neil? Uh, okay, yeah. He's going to check her out first to make sure that she's not dead. Yeah, I think that she. there's a chance she could die from this uh, based on how tough Comstone is. So yeah. um, I'm just going to give her a con roll, and then you roll your uh, medicine okay. um, and, or first aid, and you tell me what you get. Uh, a 30 under 80 for either first aid or medicine. I critically failed. Oh, no. Oh, oh shit. Oh, my shit. God. I rolled we a 77. So uh, what I'm going to say is you recognize, Neil, with your role, that she has about 20 to 30 seconds to live. Like she, She's not breathing. Oh, God. Okay. We just murdered this lady. <laughs> <laughs> first aid is not going to help her. CPR. Yeah, I'm going to start doing CPR. Is that medicine or first aid? First aid. That's first aid, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. For whatever you want. I don't. You're the doctor. You tell me. Can I? Can I aid? I, how does aiding work? Like I, because he, I have you some field medicine. You can't. Uh, this, uh, you've done enough. You've done enough. Okay. <laughs> basically, one person can do CPR. I don't care who okay. it is, but yeah, well, you can't I, really aid CPR it. unless you're aiding someone that doesn't know how to do it. But well, if you I don't know, know if there was an aid it, action in Delta Green because then I should be able. To. Um. Yeah, I think there is, but in this situation, I can't imagine. Like CPR is done by one person pretty much, unless you like have equipment, <laughs> unless like someone's breathing and someone's pumping. I mean, we could do that. Um. If you guys wanted, but even then, I st still think it's two separate roles. Yeah, I think my understanding, if I'm remembering correctly, is like if I roll and if I hit my roll, he gets like a plus twenty percent or a plus forty percent or something like that. Mm -hmm. But because I'm just like, he's like, hold her legs. Maybe I can't do it. Right? <laughs> We're like, open her mouth. Massage her thighs. I just can't remember. Um, we haven't had yeah. this nitty gritty in a while. Yeah, I don't remember either, but uh, I'll, I'll look through it. Um, I'll yeah. probably fail my first aid. 
Uh, actually, I didn't. I rolled a 13 under 30. Uh, so you succeeded. And what about you, Skid? Uh, 29 under 80. Uh, okay, Ooh. then I'll just say that you guys worked together to uh, perform CPR on her. And... <gasps> Oh, thank God. And she begins breathing again, and her heart is, and she has a pulse, but she is unconscious. <sighs> okay. God. And Neil just kind of is just like, uh, he knows what a close call we just had. Not just did this woman like losing her life, but us being murderers. So he's just like, <laughs> he sits back on his haunches, he puts his hand, his hands on his, in his head in his hands, and he's just like, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. And he gets up, and now he goes into the bathroom. He wants to treat her, her burns now. So he goes into the bathroom to try to get the stuff that he needs to do that. Roger looks around and sees everyone's faces and looks at their, uh, like, expressions of relief at her breathing and thinks he's the only one that realizes that, like, this doesn't end well for her no matter what. We can't just bring her to the police. And he's looking at her, and he's looking at the size of the fireplace, and kind of like measuring her. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm not saying anything until somebody <laughs> says something. Yeah. I'm, in uh, Vic, <laughs> I'm in the bathroom. I'm in the bathroom. I'm in the bathroom. My chair's um, broke. I gotta go fix my chair. I wanna forgo does. Vicky doesn't really want to look at Michelle right now and is instead uh, I'm gonna do a search around the apartment trying to I guess maybe I'm looking at the map of the her apartment, like it like the way it was written out. Um to see if I can make sense of the layout and stuff. Okay. You start looking around, and sure enough, you see something that basically couldn't exist. Uh, in the northern part of her living room, it opens up into another area that just the basic look at that map of the blueprints or whatever would tell you... Uh, the building can even it doesn't extend that far it's outer wall and so the outer wall is extending a little beyond that and then at the back of it you see large ornate double wooden doors oh uh -huh. is this in the spot in the map where the where it says to the night floors oh. yeah <laughs> no, jesus christ jesus she tells the group uh <clears throat> That, yeah, like they were right. The map is accurate. Um, uh, t -t 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 give me, give me, everybody give me a search roll. Uh, yeah, give, give me a search roll. 89. Ooh, oh, oh. Oof. Ooh 98. Gross. Uh, 28 under 40. Oh. Hey, very nice. 64 over 51. Nope. Um, Neil, you as an artist and educated man uh, in various ways, you finally rest easy for a second as her breath comes back and you're like, thank God I'm not a murderer. <laughs> yeah. And you turn and look to these walls of books, just floor to ceiling books. Uh, it's just basically installed bookshelves in every area of this uh, apartment. And as your eyes are glancing over these titles, you recognize several of them uh, as famous books. Uh, well-known novels or histories or you know all kinds of you know kind of educational books and then you see a change right where you Neil believe 
the apartment extends beyond the natural borders of the outer part of this building where it's supposed to be. You just notice with that roll that you see title after title after title on the spines of these books that you've never heard before. (laughs) And in fact, some of them make no logical sense to anyone that knows anything about history, (laughs) including one that says a history of the Russo-Germanic hegemony, 1911 to 1921. And Neil just zeroes in on the back of this old looking book. Wow. I'm picturing like he maybe he's gone to the bathroom already. Like Hmm. he's turned on the the tub, like he grabbed the Vaseline and he's coming back out and then he sees this stuff. It's like you hear the water running in the background. He's holding this petroleum jelly in his hand as he's like looking at the spine of this book. Yeah. And yeah, he reaches out and like grabs that book. You touch the book and pull it off the shelf and turn it over and sure enough the title a history of the russo-germanic hegemony 1911 to 1921 and you know based on your studies your history that that alliance never existed and you're just looking at the outer part of this book uh i'm gonna like look for an author like a table of contents and okay. yeah you start to open it up and you see there is no listed author uh but it starts right out of the gate in very dry prose that is overly wordy it is a history book of and you can just start sort of flipping through it it is a history book of a an alliance between russia and germany <laughs> from 1911 to 1921 and the reason the motivation for this uh sorry i guess i'm skipping ahead to keep to maintain a certain immersion like you're gonna have to take a little time literally like an hour you know to like look at this thing and if you don't want to do it this second you can hold on to it but like you'd have to like look at it to really see what it's saying but there is a whole detailed history in here that seems to not match with your timeline to use our time watch parlance. <clears throat> yeah, more than anything, he wants to plop down and just read this book cover to cover right now. But he is going to hold off. He's going to use his willpower to just tuck the book away and go back and start trying to treat this woman's uh, burn. burn. <laughs> Injuries. Okay. All right. So you start trying to do basic <laughs> medicine to her wounds. What are the rest of you doing? Bobby. Jesus what are you doing? <laughs> Bobby has pissed himself. Um, <laughs> with, okay. No, Bobby is Bobby's literally standing dumbfounded. Still got his gun out. Still scanning the area, looking around. Um, God. Uh, what, what, there's nothing he can do. He's got he's got no you know he's got no uh, medical medical skills. He's just he's just watching. He's horrified. He thinks we, we just <laughs> person in this person's apartment tr- and attacked her <laughs> and about That's to kill her. Uh, and yeah, he there hasn't are, even there really. Are, I would just say there are real concerns here about your name being attached to illegal activity. You know, like uh, breaking, you've broken the law now. Now you've actually broken the law. And if it was discovered, you could be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, we like, uh, we just need to assess. He's thinking of how we're going to cover this up, how we're going to get out of this situation immediately. Do you have any ideas? Does Bobby have (sighs) any ideas? Uh, We got to close the door. We got to close the door. We got to, we got (laughs) to. quarantine this room it's a good and we gotta figure out yeah. <laughs> yeah, close the, the door going on. close the door 
Uh, yeah, Bobby goes to close the door. Locks okay. It. L- what about uh, Vicky? Um, You're looking at these big double doors, and they are calling you, Vicky. <laughs> uh, are they? Are they? Come play with us, Vicky. No, they're not. <laughs> um, I think Vicky. I think they are. I think you're drawn to the doors as someone that lost four sanity points in that uh, lounge. I think you're like, this is the entrance I was looking for. I demanded it from this woman. She refused. Yeah. I killed her. And yeah. now here's the entrance that I was looking for. <laughs> I think she is. I agree. But I think she is stealing herself. And she isn't embarrassed by the way she acted in the other room. I mean, it was abnormal. It was unnatural. But I think she's like, now I know what to at least expect in some semblance of like what is going on. So I think she like steals herself, hand on her gun, starts walking towards the doors and is just going to check the knobs. You reach out and these are not circle knobs. They're like long, like kind of Yes, clink, uh, whatever you call those knobs. You reach out, you grab one, click, and it opens. The door opens a little bit. Like it's it's not locked. She's going to, with her gun, take her gun, holding the door, place her gun at the edge of the door, and peek inside just to see what's happening. She slowly opens up the door, peeks inside. And you see a hallway that is identical to the one in your dream that was outside of the banquet hall where your wedding was happening. Oh my God. She pulls the gun out, slams the door shut, turns around and leans against it. (laughs) Another sanity check, please, man. We're piling on today. We're oh, piling on we're today. Freaking oh. lines. 77. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. That's a yeah. crit oh, failed sh- again. Is that Max in? 63. Oh. oh. Wait. If you what if you fumble, is that Max Sam? Yes, if you fumble, oh. that's Max Sam. But in this situation, it is one point of sanity. It uh, wasn't, that, yeah. It was a zero one, so it is only one okay. point, but... Oh. <laughs> But it's enough for you, you know. <laughs> the, the the reason it's not too too bad is because you kind of knew that it was yeah. going to be unnatural when you this, opened it, this, this but you nasty. weren't expecting it to be right. It is identical to what you saw in your, your dream. dream. Yeah. Um, yeah. God, it's so freaky. Yeah, and she's <laughs> now breathing hard against her. She didn't tell anybody about her dream, right? <sighs> because yeah. it was so personal. It was like such a weird dream. It was um, just a dream, that's why. Just a dream. And she's breathing hard, and I think she walks back into the room. Um, what? What is the plan? We can't leave her body. Um, wh- what's the plan? Roger's watching Neil treat her wounds, and he's just kind of stoically staring from behind his aviators. And he's like, uh, well, now you're a nice guy. I want to be a nice guy, too. I'm just not there yet. And he, uh, grabs what's left of the, uh, jug of milk and just pours it on her face to try and wake her up. It's like dumps the rest of it on her face. He's like, oh, he's like, I told you, <laughs> don't dairy products are terrible. <laughs> and she's like, like kind of sits back. <laughs> and her eyes <laughs> flutter open a little bit. But she is zoned. Like, um, She's, her eyes are floating. Roger grabs her by the jaw and s- squeezes her mouth and it's like, hey now, 
Wake up. Wake up, little Susie. Be careful, Messiah. She's in very delicate shape. Hey, now. Where are you? And she's trying to speak. And his milk is coming out of her mouth. <laughs> It's like Bishop and aliens. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just coughing it all up. Uh. It's okay. It's okay. Where are you? Um, um, I'm in. Michelle. Michelle. Um, slap, 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 slap. Um, in. Carcosa. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Stay away from Carcosa. Spits milk up all over Roger's face. Oh, my God. This sick club, like no lips, just like. Oh, oh, we'll see you in two weeks. I think. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.